एवरी वन द टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज थर्मल कम्फर्ट वॉट इज थर्मल कम्फर्ट कम्फर्ट इज बेसिकली अ स्टेट ऑफ माइंड बिकॉज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ कम्फर्ट कैन बी डिफरेंट फॉर मी एंड डिफरेंट फॉर यू आई लाइक बींग इन सन एंड देर माइक बी सम पर्सन हु डजेंट लाइक बींग इन सन सो दैट मीन्स आर स्टेट ऑफ माइंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ comfort in the sun is different because something that is giving me satisfaction will give me comfort and what does thermal means anything related to heat is thermal heat or you can say temperature is thermal so thermal comfort all together is a state of mind that can express satisfaction in terms of surroundings of a human being it can be your temperature it can be humidity or it can be wind speed all the elements of climate that we studied earlier they are also the major factors that influence thermal comfort in human beings let me give you an example now if two people are living in same room sometimes it happens Uh, one person is good to go with ac all through the night but maybe the other person he is not that comfortable in ac so he has to take a quilt while sleeping it states that definition of thermal comfort is different for different people right now why do we need to study thermal comfort what is the importance of thermal comfort the very first point is human health you might have heard about certain news in hot summers that many people die due to severe hotness and even sometimes when there is too much of cold you listen about the news of people losing their lives because of excess cold so that means excess of temperature excess of hotness or coldness can lead to severe conditions in winters some people also get chill burns and and frost bites so that means those people who face these things their health is being affected due to temperature so that is why human health is important and for keeping the humans healthy we need to keep proper amount of temperature inside the building so as to achieve the level of thermal comfort second point is productivity how does thermal comfort affect productivity now let's say the temperature all around in your area is around 40 to 42 degree celsius and you are going to work in your going for work in your office and there is no electricity so will you be able to work in that 40 degree celsius temperature no until you switch on the ac you will not be able to work comfortably in your office that means the pro- my productivity will be lower if i don't have proper temperature inside my room which is 20 to 26 degree celsius if i have good thermal condition inside my area i will work efficiently i can work happily and i can give i can be more efficient and productive in our universities we don't have acs in our rooms so when there's so hot the teacher does not feel like teaching and the students don't feel like learning but suppose we get acs in our rooms everyone will be happy students will be happy to study teachers will be happy to teach so that means somewhere productivity is being affected by temperature next point is energy consumption in buildings temperature can lead to more of energy consumption on the basis of hvac and all the external mechanical devices or appliances that we use to keep our temperature or to keep humidity in levels so that is why it's important for us if we can use passive strategies at the time of designing the building which can reduce the consumption of direct hvacs like putting up proper windows proper orientation so that we can have less of heat transmission between the walls if we have good design then is overall well being of human being 
it is almost same as that of human health in general if the climate is good we automatically feel happy and we feel like working doing our best things maybe something that we like or our, we like to follow our hobbies so climate directly or indirectly affects the psychology of a human being so we are being affected directly due to the temperature drop or due to good weather so that means since human being is a part of nature so the well being of human being majorly depends on natural climate now the next topic is the factors that affect thermal comfort we have two types of factors first are your external factors and second are your internal factors external factors are the ones which which are dependent on environmental conditions and internal factors they are the personal characteristics of human beings that lead to thermal comfort it uh, the metabolism of humans or psychology of humans the internal factors include the personal characteristics and the environmental conditions include all the factors of climate that we studied earlier for example temperature humidity air velocity and internal factors include our clothing insulations a metabolic rate of human beings metabolism of human beings let's start with temperature first so in temperature also we have two types of temperature first is your air temperature which is the regular temperature of the air and the second one is radiant temperature radiant temperature this is direct temperature and this is indirect temperature so what is air temperature air temperature is basically the average temperature of air in any area which is surrounding that person so this becomes the primary factor in influencing the thermal comfort for a human being if the temperature is too high your body will gain heat from surroundings and you'll get you'll feel hotter and if the temperature is less the body loses heat and you will feel cold so that means average temperature directly affects the physical well being of the human being and the comfortable range of human beings in summer is 23 degree to 26 degree celsius and in winters is 20 degree to 24 degree celsius in these temperatures we can feel the maximum comfort now what is radiant temperature radiant is the indirect temperature which is coming from the surroundings like walls and windows and floors because in the day time the walls of our building it absorbs heat and at night the same heat which is being absorbed inside this wall it is released inside the building so this means the walls are also radiating certain amount of heat when the temperature drops now how are we going to use this aspect architecturally now the use of natural ventilation depends on this the use of insulation depends on this for example if we don't want more of heat coming inside our building and we need proper thermal comfort in our building we can provide insulation uh using cavity walls or maybe double walls or maybe broader what happens in cavity wall there is a wall then there is some gap and again then there is second layer of wall so these layer of walls they do not allow the heat to transfer through it now how does the heat transfer suppose this is my wall and the sun rays are coming from here inside the wall we have the wall is made up of molecules so this will get heated up then with the vibrations the radiations will go to the second molecule then to the third molecule so this is how the heat radiates now when the heat re- in the cavity wall when the de- heat reaches this this gap suppose outside the temperature is 40 degree celsius as soon as it goes inside it transmits there will be a certain amount of loss of energy and since it is being transferred one by one from one molecule to the other the temperature will automatically get reduced around 37 degrees or 38 degrees celsius now this whole temperature will go inside this air and if you have a vent upwards this whole air will go out and automatically this air which is in the contact with the inner wall of your house this will be 
of lesser temperature so that means if this is being transmitted inside you won't get much of heat it will be further reduced to 30 degrees or maybe 28 degrees celsius cavity wall will somehow help in insulation and this will indirectly create thermal comfort inside our buildings because we won't we won't get most of heat inside our building and then uh, shading devices for putting up shading devices so architecturally these are the areas where temperature can affect the thermal comfort now next environmental factor is relative humidity now how does humidity affect thermal comfort in monsoons you might have felt so sweaty uh, the, the temperature is dropped down but then you feel so much of sweat and your hands are sweaty your body is sweaty and you don't feel comfortable that is where hvac comes because hvac is not only decreasing the temperature inside the building it is also releasing humidity or the amount of water vapors from your air also you might have noticed in the time of monsoons the outlet pipe releases more of water because it is decreasing or it is taking out the humidity from your air inside your room so relative humidity is basically the percentage of moisture in your air and it affects sweat human sweat which makes the human being uncomfortable so reducing the relative humidity from 100% to 40 to 50 percent will help in achieving thermal comfort inside our buildings if it is less than 30 percent you will feel dry and irritating the skin might itch and if it it is higher than 60 percent you will feel sweaty so for getting maximum thermal comfort we should ensure that the humidity level is also good so architecturally we are going to focus on cross ventilation inside our buildings so that the wet or moisture air goes properly in and out of your building uh, decreasing the amount of humidity and then again applying the HVACs inside the areas which have so much of humidity so yeah relative humidity affects the thermal comfort of a human being because temperature might be low but sweating will always be uncomfortable for example in gyms now next is air velocity how is air velocity important air velocity is basically the speed of air around your body now suppose the temperature in your area is 30 degrees celsius and in your room you don't have your fans switched on now if the fan is not switched on you will feel fine but as soon as the fan is switched on you will feel better because when the air starts moving it takes the heat from your body and releases the heat from your body that helps in cooling you down and you feel comfortable when the fan is switched on that means the speed of air also helps in creating thermal comfort in human beings right because it improves the process of heat loss through the process of evaporation making the human being feel more comfortable and more cooler than the average temperature around now how architecturally it's gonna help we can give the proper placements of windows according to the wind direction or the flow of wind in your area and the places which are colder you can avoid having gaps these are all the environmental factor that helps that impacts the human thermal comfort the second types of factor are your personal factors and the very important one is metabolism of a human being now what is metabolism metabolism rate is basically the energy produced in your body through physical activities now when you do exercise or maybe when you are uh, walking all up on the stairs you feel you feel sweaty why because you are producing energy by working out your muscles so when you are working out energy is being produced and the more energy is produced the more heat is produced according to that that means higher your activity higher will be the 
metabolism rate now metabolism rate of different human being is different uh, when there is a change in season there is transition in the season there are some people who start wearing sweaters earlier than the others right why because the metabolism rate of some people will be lower and some people will be higher the metabolism rate of the people which is higher they produce more heat they produce more energy that's why their body is comparatively warmer than the others that is why they don't feel cold as soon as the people with low metabolism rate got it so metabolism rate for every human being is different and obviously this will affect the thermal comfort the same example goes here when you are sleeping in a room one person might feel cold in ac and the other person might not because the metabolism rate of this person who is feeling cold is less and the person who is feeling hot the metabolism rate of this person is more and what is the difference between these two people difference between these two people if they are working out in a gym this person will sweat more and this person will sweat less because the energy produced by this person is more more the energy more the heat that is why more the sweating so architecturally where it is helping while designing according to occupancy rate while designing gyms we also we always have to take care of the hvac installed in the areas because there will be more heat inside uh, a gym as compared to a normal commercial or a residential place that is why the setting of ac or the cross ventilation in this area is more important than the others so that there is proper thermal comfort inside the building fine and last point is clothing insulation now clothing the example for this is clothing insulation is basically the layering of clothes that we do during winters the more the layers the insulation depends on the number of layers plus the type of fabric the fabric is wool the heat energy produced by your body will not go out of your body and it will get trapped so that is why you will feel warmer because every type of fabric has its own the thermal resistance yeah so these were all the factors clothing insulation metabolism rate air velocity relative humidity and temperature both internal and external factors determine the proper amount of thermal comfort for a human being inside a building thank you now in the next lecture we'll study about human heat balance how the heat production the heat transmission works on a human body thank you Thank <laughs> you.